Hey guys, Brad Norton here with Atlas Target Works, and in this video I'm going to answer the question that keeps you up at night. What is AR500 steel and why does it work so well for targets? AR500 may sound like a very tactical name, like it was made from the latest tactical craze. But in reality, AR500 steel doesn't stand for anything to do with the gun industry. The AR in AR500 stands for abrasion resistant. The 500 in AR500 stands for 500 Brunel hardness. A Br Brunel hardness is just a specific scale used to test the hardness of metals. What they do is they take a ball of a known diameter that's very hard, they press it into the steel with a known force, and then they measure the diameter of the indentation it leaves. Then they can calculate how far that ball penetrated and then correlate that to a hardness. The largest use for AR500 in the United States is not targets or armor plating, it's actually for the mining industry. It's abrasion resistance and impact resistant makes it ideal for the use on teeth for buckets, cutting edges on blades, conveyor belt systems. It's, uh, it's weldability also makes it a great asset for the mining industry. As great as AR500 steel is, it's not magic. That's why we have guidelines for use to make your target last as many rounds as possible. The number one rule when it comes to steel targets is to make sure that you keep your bullet velocity at or below 3,000 feet per second at impact on the target. Just because you shoot something faster than that, like 22250, doesn't mean you can't shoot steel targets. It just means that you have to have your target out far enough that the bullet is slowed so it is going 3,000 feet per second or below when it impacts the target. Velocity is what causes the small pits to form in the face of your target and what can eventually degrade it to the point where the target is unusable. No matter how thick the target, the surface hardness is still the same. So a half inch target is not going to pit less than a 3 8 target. Now, there are some instances where a, a bullet may go through 3 8 thick plate and it won't go through half inch, but it'll still mess up the surface pretty bad on both targets. Half inch targets will, however, resist warping on your larger caliber rifles like 300 Win Mag, things like that. The thinner 3 8 when you're repeatedly hitting the center of the target, will actually start to warp and bend around where those bullets are being are striking the target face. If you're on top of it, you can catch it early enough, you can flip the target back around and shoot it back the other way, but if you let it get too far, you can ruin your target. That's why if you're gonna shoot something bigger, half inch is where you wanna go. So as a general guideline, quarter inch is gonna be great for pistol calibers. It's light, it rings really loud, it's cheaper. If you're only gonna be shooting pistols at it, you can go with quarter inch AR500 steel. 3 8 thick AR500 steel is gonna be good for up to a 308 at 100 yards, generally speaking. You still need to keep your velocities below 3,000 feet per second, but that's kind of the go-to steel target for a lot of people. If you're gonna be shooting extreme ranges with bigger stuff, as long as your velocities are down low enough, you don't have to worry about it. You can get by with 3 8 thick steel, but it has to be at a distance. Half inch AR500 steel is gonna be great for your Magnum rifle rounds, and that's generally what I'll recommend for 300 Win Mag, things like that. When shooting steel targets, you wanna make absolute sure you're using lead core ammunition. It doesn't matter if it's full metal jacket, ballistic tip, soft point, you just need to make sure you have a lead core. Nothing like the 556 green tip that's got a steel core in it or a copper core or a bimetal core. You wanna make sure you're using lead core. I have seen reviews online from people saying that they use 556 green tip on it uh, to great results. And it may not look like it's doing much damage to the target, but the thing that you have to be concerned about is that steel core. What's happening to that steel core in that bullet? Where is that going? Is it gonna ricochet in some direction that uh, you can't foresee, you can't anticipate, protect against? Also, I have heard firsthand accounts uh, from people that have shot green tips at their targets, actually created a fire down range because the steel on steel contact created a spark, started a fire. So there's other considerations than just how much damage it does to the face of the target. Now ideally, your target face should be nice and flat. Here's your target, nice and flat. When you have a projectile come in, it hits the flat face of the target, it basically explodes into a million pieces and diffracts from the target face like so. It goes in harmless directions. The pieces are so small, they don't have hardly any energy to go anywhere. They're just tiny little pieces of dust. Now, if you have a target face that's all pitted up, you're gonna have pits in there. Now this is obviously exaggerated, but to show my point, when your bullets go into there, they're going to hit those edges and come back out like this in the direction of the shooter. That's why you always want to make sure you're wearing eye protection when you're shooting steel targets because the little pieces that come back, 
If they hit your skin, I have seen them draw, draw blood before, but if they hit you in the eye, that's, that's a serious issue. So always make sure you're wearing eye protection. And that's why you wanna make sure your targets stay in good maintenance. If you're down at 75, 100 yards shooting a rifle at a target that's a little bit pitted up, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Those pieces of lead don't have the energy to come back that far. But if you're up close at like 10 yards shooting pistol at this, then you could have issues with the lead coming back and being a, a safety concern. I like to take my targets and flip, have one side that I use for pistol and one side that I only use for rifle downrange. The heat affected zone is the depth around the perimeter of the cut that has essentially had the heat treat of the AR500 steel ruined. The heat treat on the steel is ruined from the heat that is generated during the cutting process and then slowly cooled. So essentially it anneals the target back down to a lower hardness, which is not what you want to have happen to your target. Cutting techniques like a water-cooled plasma or a laser have very small heat-affected zones, somewhere on the order of 30 thousandths of an inch. A cutting technology like water jet is going to have no heat-affected zone, but it's slow and typically a more expensive process. Cutting this material with a regular plasma or a torch is going to generate a lot of heat in the metal and ruin a large portion of it uh, around the perimeter of the cut. So it's definitely not something you want to do. At Atlas Target Works, we laser cut all of our AR500 steel as we believe it affords the best quality and overall cost effectiveness of any cutting technology available. I've also heard the opinion expressed that somebody can have their own mild steel targets cut and shoot the crap out of them and then replace them when need be several times over for what it would cost to buy one AR500 steel target. And that's not true at all. I don't know how many rounds you shoot in a single session, but I shoot enough just going out that I could toast a steel target in one outing if it were mild steel. Here's an example I have of a piece of 3 8 mild steel that I shot at with green tip 5.56 and then a 55 grain full metal jacket 223. Uh, the 556 went all the way through and the full metal jacket went most of the way through, actually bulged out on the back side of the target. And this can actually be more dangerous. That bottom of that hole is curved, or not that hole, but that pocket is curved and it doesn't dissipate all the energy by fragmenting the bullet on the surface like it will on AR500 steel. It actually goes in and it can send a huge portion of that bullet, if not the whole thing, back with enough energy to come back at the shooter. Not only that, but I mean those, those individual spots, you can shoot that hardly any at all, even with just a 223 and have any bit of a target left when you're done with one outing. Thanks a lot for checking out this video. I hope I answered any questions you may have had about AR500 steel or targets. If you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to contact me at info at atlastargetworks.com. Also, if you're in the market for some targets, we'd appreciate you giving us a shot. You can check us out at atlastargetworks.com.